When we first feel pain, what do we do? We usually run to the medicine cabinet or to the drugstore and we take a pill. In effect, we say to the body, shut up, I don't want to hear you. The body will quiet down for a little bit, then the whisperings return and this time a little louder. Maybe we go to the doctor for an injection or a prescription or we do something else. But at some point we have to pay attention to what is going on because we may have a full-blown dis-ease of some sort. Even at that point, some people still want to play victim and still don't listen. Others awaken to what's going on and are willing to make changes. It's okay. We all learn in different ways. The answers may be as simple as getting a good night's sleep or not going out seven nights a week or not pushing yourself at work. Allow yourself to listen to your body because it does want to get well. Your body wants to be healthy and you can cooperate with it. When I first feel pain or discomfort, I quiet myself. I trust that my higher power will let me know what needs to be changed in my life so that I can be free from this dis-ease. In these quiet times, I visualize the most perfect natural setting with my favorite flowers growing in abundance all around me. I can feel and smell the sweet warm air as it blows gently across my face and I concentrate on relaxing every muscle in my body. When I feel that I have reached a state of complete relaxation, I simply ask my inner wisdom. How am I contributing to this problem? What is it that I need to know? What areas of my life are in need of change? Then I breathe and let the answers pour over me. The answers may not come at that moment, but I know that they will be revealed to me soon. I know that whatever changes are needed are the right ones for me and that I will be completely safe no matter what unfolds before me. Sometimes you wonder how you can accomplish such changes. How will I live? What about the children? How will I pay my bills? Again, trust your higher power to show you the means to live a plentiful, pain-free life. I also suggest that you make changes one step at a time. Lao Tse said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. One small step added to another can create significant major advancements. Once you go about making your changes, please remember that the pain does not necessarily disappear overnight, and yet it may. It has taken time for pain to surface, therefore it may take some time to recognize that it is no longer needed. Be gentle with yourself. Don't gauge your progress by someone else's. You are unique and have your own way of handling your life. Put your trust in your higher self in order to free yourself of all physical and emotional pain. Forgiveness is the key to freedom. I often ask clients, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? We all have opinions on who was right and who was wrong according to our own perceptions and we can all find ways to justify our feelings. We want to punish others for what they did to us. However, we are the ones running the story over and over in our own minds. It is foolish for us to punish ourselves in the present because someone hurt us in the past. To release the past, we want to be willing to forgive, even if we don't know how. Forgiveness means giving up our hurtful feelings and just letting the whole thing go. A state of non-forgiveness actually destroys something within ourselves. No matter what avenue of spirituality you follow, you will usually find that forgiveness is an enormous issue at any time, but most particularly when there is an illness. When we are ill, we really need to look around and see who it is we need to forgive. And usually the very person who we think we will never forgive is the one we need to forgive the most. Not forgiving someone else doesn't harm the other person in the slightest, but it plays havoc with us. The issues aren't theirs, the issues are ours. The grudges and hurts you feel have to do with forgiving yourself, not someone else. Affirm that you are totally willing to forgive everyone. I am willing to free myself from the past. I am willing to forgive all those who may ever have harmed me 
and I forgive myself for having harmed others. If you think of anyone who may have harmed you in any way at any point in your life, bless that person with love and release them and then dismiss the thought. I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't forgiven the people who have hurt me. I would not want to punish myself today for what they did to me in the past. I'm not saying that it would be easy. It's just that now I can look back at that stuff and say, oh yes, that's something that happened. However, I don't live there anymore, and it is not the same as condoning their behavior. If you feel ripped off by another, know that nobody can take anything from you that is rightfully yours. If it belongs to you, it will return to you at the right time. If something doesn't come back to you, it wasn't meant to. You need to accept that and go on with your life. To become free, you need to get out of your self-righteous resentment and off your pity pot. I love this expression, which originated with Alcoholics Anonymous, because it is such a wonderful, accurate description. When you are sitting on your pity pot, you are this helpless person who has no power at all. In order to have power, you want to stand on your own two feet and take responsibility. Take a moment and close your eyes, if you can, and imagine a beautiful stream of water in front of you. Take the old painful experience, the hurt and the unforgiveness, and put the whole incident in the stream. See it begin to dissolve and drift downstream until it totally dissipates and disappears. You can do this as often as you want. This is a time for compassion and healing. Go within and connect with that part of yourself that knows how to heal. You are incredibly capable. Be willing to go to new levels to find capabilities of which you were not aware. Not just to cure dis-ease, but to truly heal yourself on all possible levels. To make yourself whole in the deepest sense of the word. To accept every part of yourself and every experience you have ever had and to know that it is all part of the tapestry of your life this time around. I love Emmanuel's book. There is a passage in it which has a good message. The question to Emmanuel is, how do we experience painful circumstances without becoming embittered by them? And Emmanuel's reply is, by seeing them as lessons and not as retribution. Trust life, my friends. However far afield life seems to take you, this trip is necessary. You have come to traverse a wide terrain of experience in order to verify where truth lies and where your distortion is in that terrain. You will then be able to return to your home center, your soul self, refreshed and wiser. If only we could understand that all of our so-called problems are just opportunities for us to grow and to change, and that most of them come from the vibrations that we have been giving off. All we really need to do is change the way we think, be willing to dissolve the resentment, and be willing to forgive. Understanding and listening to your body is a very important thing. All people should practice this. According to Lewis Hay, when a person is sick, or starts to feel pain, we normally just look for a fix so that we don't have to deal with it, but it always comes back and sometimes as more. People don't understand that the body wants to be healthy. It does not want to be in a state where it hurts, feels pain, and the best way for the body to heal is to listen and then be willing to make changes. The body will only tell a person, but it is up to the person to make the change happen. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and do make sure to share your thoughts with us in the comment section.